What's up, Fit Fam? Coach Rye from Team Flex here. Today, we're going to get down into tutorials, lessons, educations, all about the glute ham tie in. If you are a bikini competitor or a wellness competitor or a coach that's coaching bikini or wellness competitors, this video is literally going to be just for you. Like, we're breaking it down in every single way. What is the tie-in first off? What judges want to see with it? Why do they want to see it? Um, you know, what exactly makes it up? What are the muscles and the conditionings and things like that that we need to see? What are the actual functions of the muscles? And also a specific exercise selection, activation drills, other drills you're not going to know or, you know, figure out how to do on your own. It's all going down in this video. And if you make sure you watch the whole thing, I promise you, you're going to be well on the road to actually getting that tie-in, all right? So this is one of these new videos I've been doing. I did a tutorial back uh, just a little bit ago about the upper glute. Here we go into the tie-ins. If you are liking these, please make sure you comment. The reason I'm doing this one is because of all the positive comments on the first one of people saying, hey, we want more. So drop me a comment. Let me know if you want some more. Make sure you hit that subscribe button because these are going to keep coming along with other great information to make you a better competitor. All right, so let's get down to it. I want to talk about just kind of first off real quick, what is the tie in? All right, if you're a new competitor or something like that, you may not know, but even if you've been around doing some shows, you know, it's good to refresh. So the tie -in is what you're going to see on all these athletes in the photos here. So in the top, we have uh, bikini. This is top four at Olympia last year. And you'll see all these tie in zones. And down here, we got wellness a little bit more prominent. You can see, you know, um, the wellness tie coming through a bit more. We'll go over why that happens too uh, a little bit later in the video. But basically the tie-in zone is the actual zone where uh, the hamstrings meet the glutes. There is no special tie-in muscle, all right? I hear that a lot. I see that a lot. A lot of coaches that have no damn clue what the heck they're talking about telling you that there's a specific tie-in muscle and here's how you train it and influencers trying to put out ebooks there is not ladies and gents and whoever's watching this there is a no specific tie-in muscle the tie-in is a combination of a few things coming from the glutes and the hamstrings and conditioning we'll talk more about that in a bit why is it so important though if you're a competitor really comes down to what judges are looking for okay so judges when they are looking at the tie-in zone really what they're trying to see is that there's a slight separation of muscle okay and you'll see all these athletes and this is our top uh, athletes at the Olympia by the way for bikini and wellness this is pretty serious stuff um, they are going to show slight separation and that's really it so judges are looking for that little bit of separation you don't need to have a specific like really hard chiseled ham tie that will actually score you down if you do have that and you also don't want to be holding any extra body fat here okay so this can be a spot that judges really look at and say, okay, is this athlete actually in the right condition? Have they actually built the right amount of muscle? Because you will not be able to diet yourself to a tie-in, ladies, okay? I'm telling you straight up, you cannot just overly diet, do tons of cardio, and you'll show that tie-in if you don't have that muscle. And we're going to go over all that through this video. Uh, but really make sure that you understand what this is. It's a combination of actually having the muscle development coming with that conditioning, and you don't want to hold too much body fat. You don't want to be too lean either because either one of those things is going to score you down. And you'll see even though all these athletes here in the photos, um, you know, you can see these lines. You can see that separation. This is not hard and grainy. It's not chiseled in a way, you know, like you would see in uh, higher divisions, figure and things like that. We start seeing actual separations of muscles. OK, just want to see that. And they're gauging this. And, you know, like I say all the time, bikini and wellness are one from the back. And this is something you want to make sure you have, especially going in to, you know, the season right now and the season moving forward because it's getting more and more competitive out there every day. So now I kind of want to talk about what actually makes up this tie in zone. It's important you know this. We just talked about the muscles and what they do and how they work. And so here's what we're really looking at for that tie in. It's going to be a combination of mainly glute max. So if you watched my other video and if you didn't check that out, subscribe. Come on now. It's great stuff. Um, we were talking about a lot of glute medius last time, the upper glute. Now we're talking about glute max. This is what the, you know, the primary amount of your glute is going to be. And this is what's going to bring that tie in zone. So this is where it comes in to actually go and then meet the hamstring. So here we go. Glute max, ladies and gents out here. Anybody watching glute max meets 
the hammies, okay? This is what brings the tie-in. So the hamstrings are made of a few different muscles, okay? Semitendinosus, semimembranosus, and bicep femoris, okay? These are the main ones, these three muscles here. Boom, boom, boom. Now, you'll notice, like I said to you, there is no ham tie muscle, right? We don't have the magical muscle in here called the tie-in. That doesn't exist. This is the tie-in, okay? This is where these muscles all come together. That's where we get, boom, there is our tie-in so really important you understand that you have to have that muscular development or you simply are not going to get it and here's another nice view of it just a side view for you kind of highlights a little bit more you know just what we're looking at glute max comes into that hamstring zone okay so want to make sure you understand that and the way these muscles are trained is a little bit different than you know what you might know uh, probably everybody watching this is doing some type of training in the gym i would assume most of you probably pretty intermediate maybe even advanced but knowing the function of these muscles actually will make a difference in how you can actually develop them when you train you'll hear all the time competitors saying i just can't get the tie in i'm not getting the tie in the tie in's not coming I'm doing season after season. I'm just not getting there. Well, there's a number of reasons that happens and we're going to go into that uh, more in just a second. But realistically, it comes down to a lot of the fact that you don't understand how these muscles are trained. OK, so let's look back here uh, real quick at the glute for a sec. So the glute muscle here. All right. This is trained by actually going into uh, extension at the hips. So what that means, and it might actually be even easier for me to show you here, extension of your hip joint, okay, like at the thigh. So, you know, you think about it when you get out of a chair, your hips are flexed, then they extend. Hips go forward, glutes kick on. All of this comes to play and the party is on, okay? So really important you understand when the hips go forward, you're extending that hip, your glutes are what is actually moving you forward in that sense and something that you definitely want to pay attention to to train. Another thing that the glutes do uh, is external rotation. So you imagine, you know, rotating your leg outward and away from your body is another way. You can see kind of in this in this illustration how the glute fibers run. When these shorten, that's what's going to give us a, a lot more glute activation there too. And it's another way to really train that glute. But again, you're not going to hear a lot of people doing this type of stuff in the gym or paying attention that much, right? They're going to go in there and do some deadlifts and do all that. And yes, that's working to a degree. But when you're talking about creating a tie-in zone, this actual legit tie-in that's going to show on stage, we're talking about learning to train these muscle groups in more of a, a kind of isolative manner to really allow them to hold their shape separately so that then it can come together, okay? But you do have to have that development. Now, let's talk about the hamstrings for a second. The hamstrings, obviously, you know, they do things like curl. Uh, let's look at this one here. So basically hamstring, you know, it's kind of like your bicep. It's literally called bicep femoris, right? So but it's kind of like when you curl your arm in, right? It's it's gonna create that shortening effect here. That's an, one function of the hamstring. It flexes the knee, okay? So that's one way to really get a lot out of it. Um, other ways are extending the hips. Same kind of thing, when the hip extends, boom, the hamstrings come to the party with the glutes, okay? So not as isolated here, but you're still gonna get training there. Rotating at the hip is another way too. So more rotation, just like we talked about with the glute, and then the back extension at the hip, to kind of think about, you know, your good mornings and stuff like that, exercises we're actually gonna talk about. And by the way, if you're getting a lot out of this right now, this video is gonna keep rolling, but I am doing uh, actual courses I'm building right now for uh, competitors to go through and actual coaches out there too, to tell you how to do way more in-depth stuff than this. I'm giving you guys the simple, quick, easy tutorials on this stuff, and I'm gonna give you some really good nuggets, so stick with me here. But uh, what I'm gonna do in these courses Courses is going to be absolutely insane. So if you're interested in learning more information about those, there's going to be a form here, um, a link to kind of subscribe to a form to get some updates on that as it's going to be developed and coming out. So make sure you check the description and you do that. That's going to be definitely a really cool thing. If you're enjoying these, you're going to love that like 100 times more. All right. So just want to say that real quick. I won't bombard you with these things. Let's keep talking about this tie-in. Okay. So you'll notice what happens is with these tie-in zones is it's two different muscles we got to develop and they got to be developed kind of separately to come together with the conditioning. Okay. So really important to know. One question I get all the time from competitors, why don't I have a tie-in coach? I've been training for a long time. I've been, you know, doing this stuff. I've been competing. I just switched over to training with Team Flex, whatever. I don't have tie-in. I want to get one on stage. Well, here's a couple of reasons why you don't, all right? Sitting too damn much is probably one of the big ones. Um, like I always say, when you're sitting on your glutes, your glutes literally go to sleep. 
sleep, it's game over. Like you're just messing up your proprioception and all that stuff we talked about in the last video. But basically, you know, they're not firing up as much in the gym. So sitting a lot is a bad thing. Uh, doing too much cardio, okay? If you're doing a lot of cardio, like a lot of coaches prescribe and stuff like that, you're literally burning off muscle in a lot of senses. And you'll, you're, you, it doesn't matter how many glute exercises you wanna do, how many things you wanna do for the hamstring. If you're not, you know, in the spot to be keeping that muscle on your body, you're gonna burn it and it's gonna be game over. So too much cardio is a killer for the glutes and the hamstrings. Not eating enough is another one, right? So we talk a lot about the training in these, but the eating has to support the actual goal of building muscle. If we're talking about the ham tie-in, this tie-in zone, the glute tie-in, being a combination of you know well-developed glutes, well-developed hamstrings coupled with conditioning, well, we gotta have that development first and you're not gonna put muscle on in a deficit, all right? So imagine you know a lot of coaches out there giving you a calorie deficit, you're eating low calories as a bikini or wellness competitor, you know, with a lot of coaches out there and you're doing cardio, sometimes multiple cardios a day. Talk about death to the tie-in, okay? Death to the tie-in, ladies, that's what it's gonna do to you. So you wanna make sure you have, you know, put your calories in a spot that you're enough to actually have built that muscle and done that correctly. Um, another reason you might not have a tie-in is you don't actually meet stage conditioning. And we're gonna talk more about conditioning through this video, but you know, if you don't actually get lean enough, you're gonna have too much body fat and you're never gonna actually be seeing those visible muscles. That's a huge one uh, for a lot of competitors. Now, you know, other ones that make sense and we're gonna talk about some actual stuff is not doing exercise to target correctly and not doing the proper activation drills, okay? So that's where we're gonna kind of move next, but let me just show you what these look like on the competitors here themselves, all right? So here's some of our top athletes, this tie-in, boom. You're not too striated, not too deep, not too cut, but full in the development of the glute, full development in the hamstrings, ties in together. There we are with that conditioning, okay? So the conditioning of bikini and in wellness is very, very on par. It's, it's basically exactly the same, okay? And what you're gonna see with bikini and wellness athletes is that wellness athletes appear they have more actual, you know, uh, conditioning. Like it looks like it's cutting through more. Like that tie-in is harder in that sense. But realistically, it's not. The difference is the actual muscle development of a wellness athlete. They have a lot more muscle in the lower body. That's what makes that division different, right? So if we take bikini where it's very symmetrical, very shapely, all hourglass, all shaped together, and we look at wellness, okay, it's lower body dominant, they're gonna have more muscle there. So when that muscle, compares with that same conditioning, which is basically how lean you are, it actually makes you look a little bit leaner in that sense because there's more muscle there, right? So basically what you wanna know, and I threw these kind of side poses in there, you know, this is not even side poses, these are just transitions, but you can literally see just the amount of development we're actually talking about to the point where even in a transition, you've got that kind of separation and that development really going on in both of these athletes here, okay? So let's talk uh, a bit now about the actual warmups, the stuff nobody wants to do, the stuff that you need to be doing if you actually wanna take this seriously. If you came here to try to watch, hey, what are my top suggestions for exercises, I tell you what, it's not gonna benefit you. The, the best thing you can do is take all the information I got here for you with the actual uh, prehab, the actual warm-ups, and then the actual work sets and stuff like that, and that's gonna be a game changer, all right? On Team Flex, we get results like crazy. People say, oh, it looks like it took this person two, three years to get that development. No, it's it's probably months at a time because literally what we do is we build everything out and we get you know all this done. We, I make my athletes do the stuff that nobody actually wants to do. One of them being rolling out, okay? So we talked about self-myofascial release in the last video. Video. We're talking about it again. This is key. This is important. This is something that is really going to help. So I'm going to tell you what areas to roll out. And I recommend always using a lacrosse ball or something like that because the lacrosse ball uh, tends to be hard enough to really get in there and actually work that muscle out. When you go do this, what you're doing is you're separating the myofascial tissue from the actual muscle. And the myofascial tissue is what actually lets that muscle glide and slide when you're training. If this stuff gets it's you know, tied up, gets locked down, it gets tight. You're not training as effectively, which means when you go do any exercise, you're not getting as good range of motion. You're not utilizing that muscle as much as you could. And overall, you're gonna be getting worse results, okay? So very important to understand that. This is not something to skip out on, and it is gonna be killer. It does hurt for most people because they really need it. Like if your myofascial tissue and your muscle tissues were all healthy, you should feasibly be able to roll on a hard lacrosse ball or baseball or something like that, like sitting on 
on it on the floor rolling around no problem with no pain but i guarantee you any of you that actually do this if you even do drill one here we're going to talk about you're going to be in the hurt locker and that means that you need it and you could be getting better results from all your workouts you know glute everything hamstring all that if you actually just did this so first thing i want to talk about is rolling the glutes okay here's how i suggest you do it you get a hard ball like a lacrosse ball or a baseball something like that a lot of people want to try to use tennis balls or the fancy little massage balls you buy online or whatever okay those don't really work that good compared to your training right if you're training heavy hard with weights all the time you're out there lifting you're doing different things and you're you're, you're basically building this muscle like crazy constantly and you know you're sitting there doing heavy weights you're gonna have to have something that kind of correlates that same way so using a harder object works better for athletes that are well trained well developed if you're just starting out you could start with a tennis ball something like that and move your way up but definitely suggest lacrosse ball baseball something of that nature because it's going to just work so much better and you'll get a better result and if you're going to take the time to do it might as well get it so rolling the glutes um, i suggest doing this you know basically put the ball on the floor sit down on it even put your one of your legs up on your knee or something like that if you need to you really want to get in there and you want to just dig into the glute fully and what this does is i've talked about it in the other video but basically it's uh like waking up every nerve in the body too right so it says oh hey here's the map of the glute here's everything going on this allows you to actually train the glute better when you're in training like a lot of people say i can't even feel my glutes working in training i can't feel my hamstrings i'm doing all the deadlifts i'm doing the hip thrusts, whatever but i don't feel it it's not feeling like i'm actually training it well that's because that area that muscle you don't have that proprioception and when you start to train that and you bring that through that becomes a huge huge difference in how you're actually getting results so it's like i said before if you've ever traveled somewhere and you're looking at a map on your phone and you're like where am i at if you lose service the map stops populating well that's what happens when you don't kind of get this this rolling and the stuff going on with the body to make sure that all these areas are firing up okay you want to make sure you have that map firing it's going to be better for you uh i suggest rolling the glutes you probably want to do that at least a minute each side you know it could be one two sets and this is stuff you don't necessarily need to do just before the workout you can do any of the rolling anytime and it's going to be benefit any training you do anytime okay the more you can do this the better i usually suggest to clients if they're having an issue with this and they really want to ramp it up i say do this stuff daily okay take 10 15 minutes really roll it out and it's going to be a big difference now rolling the hamstrings is number two so roll out your hamstrings i suggest doing this pretty aggressively so basically you put the ball down and you're going to go ahead and sit on it but now you're sitting on it in the sense of it's on your hamstring and you're going to roll back and forth all around basically just smashing into the hamstrings again we're building that map we're turning it on we're getting things ready to work the other one i want you to roll number three is the hip flexor so front of the hip this is important because what did i tell you these muscles do the glutes and the hamstrings they help extend that hip so if we want to get better activation out of the glutes and the hamstrings opening up that hip more is going to allow us to actually do that more if you got tight hips which everyone does from sitting in our daily life and everything else we do uh you're not getting as much range of motion you're not getting as much benefit out of your training as you could be so rolling the hip is pretty gnarly it's going to hurt i'll tell you what but it's going to benefit you and what you want to do is pretty much put a ball on the floor you want to get on top of it lay on it get to the top of the thigh and roll and roll that out and cut through and it starts to get pretty fired up it will hurt uh, but it will make a huge difference in the gym. So obviously there's tons more drills, you guys. Again, remember what I said, make sure you're, you're, you're hitting that link down there, signing up to get updates about the courses and things coming out that will go way more in depth. I don't wanna make a four hour video for you guys to watch. I'm trying to get through this with good amounts of information, but just know there's, there's like literally vaults and vaults of this stuff I got in my brain I can give you on these actual courses that are coming. So make sure you're on that list, all right? I guarantee you, let's move forward into activation drills now once you've opened it up you did the rolling all that we want to move into stuff where we actually like activate this muscle and we say okay it's time to get to work we're about to start training if you just rush into the gym and you start lifting your body's going to start you know not working for several sets could be several exercises in the sense of you're not actually firing the right muscles you're not using the right muscles don't forget every time you do any exercise you're not just training a muscle right you're you're, you're literally involving joints cartilage uh you know your skeleton all your structure of every everything in your body's working basically right so your body will find the path of least resistance and if it doesn't know it's supposed to be firing up these muscles it's going to use maybe you know oh yeah let's do a deadlift but we're going to use a lot more back instead of actual glutes and hamstrings stuff like that so 
Taking time to activate, very, very important. I'm gonna give you two here uh, for each kind of muscle. So for glutes, what I wanna suggest is a variance of band walks. And there's a lot of ways to do this, but you know, get a band, put it on the knee. You can do some lateral walks that way. You could do some front walks. You could do some low squat while you're walking. And just basically we're, what we're doing here all the time with the band is getting the glutes to fire up, getting everything ready to work. And you know, I like doing variances of these because doing the same one gets boring as shit for one. One, and for two, it tends to uh, also just work a bit better, have some variance in the actual warm up drills you're doing. So, again, you know, you could try some forward walks, um, some backward walks, some side walks, lateral shifts, squats, all this kind of stuff. But basically, putting the band right above the knees and just working that, especially in that low stance, that's going to be great for firing up the glutes. Really good one. Another one I like is frog pumps. All right. And this one's a lot of people go, well, I don't really want to do this. It looks kind of weird, Coach Ride. It's a weird looking exercise. If you do frog pumps, you're going to get a way better benefit out of your training session. I guarantee you. So definitely want to try. Um, basically, you put your feet together, you know, you're laying on the ground and you're going to just bridge up. And what this does is it fires up the glutes uh, fully and you're going to get a lot of benefit out of that. As you get better at it, you start, you know, body weight, you can uh, add some actual weight to that dumbbell, stuff like that to make it better and harder, but you don't need to go crazy on this. It's not a main set exercise. It is just a warm up. Hamstrings, what I suggest is a glute bridge and curl. So this is one that's probably new to a lot of you. So if you're like, okay, Coach Rock gave us some basic stuff here so far, here's something that is a lot, a lot I never see anybody doing <laughs> unless I program them. Uh, glute bridge and curl. So you do this, you can do this with sliders on the floor. You can do this with like TRX suspension trainers or straps that hang down for the roof, or you can do a stability ball, something like that, like a Swiss ball, right? Those are really the ways that you're gonna be able to do it. You could probably do it with a foam roller if you had one, but it's not as good. I wouldn't suggest that specifically. But basically what you do here is you're in a uh, bridge position where you have these objects that are gonna slide under your feet or glide in other words. Uh, and basically what you do is you're in the bridge and you extend out, you push your feet out and you pull them back in, curl them in. This is a really, really good exercise for waking up the hamstrings, getting them to fire up. It's isolative, it gets in the zone and also still giving you that kind of separation effect where we're working the glutes some, but we're really focused on the hamstrings there. Really good exercise. So definitely don't skip out on that. Um, I suggest doing that, you know, all the warm up exercise, by the way, pretty high reps, two, three sets of, you know, 15 reps, 20 reps. The goal is to get things firing. It's not to train too hard, not, you know, PR on your damn bridge and leg curl. All right. Next one, Nordic hamstring curl. So this one, you know, you could call it Nordic hamstring curl. You could call it whatever kind of curl. Um, basically here, I want you to actually do it in an isolative, a hold manner. No, so not actually doing reps. Uh, and basically what this is, you know, some people do it where they have somebody help them, where they hold their feet. Uh, you're kind of on your knees and then you lean forward and come back up. You know, there's machines that do this in a lot of gyms, like the glute ham developer or the glute ham raise stuff we're going to talk about. Um, but basically I want you to do this in a hold manner. It's almost like an isometric hold. Really what you would do is get into the spot, get in the zone there where, you know, you're on your knees upright and then you kind of fall forward just a little bit. You just lean forward enough to feel your hamstrings holding you, preventing you from falling forward. And then you're just going to hold that, you know, 30, 45 seconds. And then you shift it back. You shift it back and you take a rest and you start over. Okay. And when you notice these activation drills, they really work each muscle zone separately. So we're getting benefit out of each zone, which is really going to be beneficial to create that tie in. All right. Now I want to talk specifically about actual exercises. And this is where, again, I have so many things I could tell you. I could probably list you a hundred exercises for glutes, a hundred for hamstrings to get your tie in just perfect. But for the sake of the video, I'm gonna give you three and three, uh, or maybe four, three, three or four of each. But I want to make you aware this course that I'm gonna be doing is gonna be crazy. So get on that list uh, to make sure you get notified about it. It's in the description, hit that button. And if you made it this far with me while you're at it, just subscribe, okay? Subscribe with Coach Rye, I'm doing this for free. I wanna make you better, I wanna help you. And we're gonna keep doing it too. So you will not waste that subscription on one of these you know, junk pages out there. Okay, let's talk now. I wanna separate each zone of building. Here's what we're gonna do, glutes first. Exercise number one, dumbbell deficit deep squat. All right, one of the top exercises for glutes, I would say, uh, really, really good to 
bring out that kind of glute zone and really just add that development to the glute max a lot of ways and i like the deficit because you get to get deeper when you get deep is when you really start hitting the glute more and more you know over just the quads and everything else. everybody thinks of squats it's just a quad exercise no 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 if you're doing it deep and you're doing it like this you're going to feel the glute a lot okay so the way i suggest doing it you want to get two things you can stand on i suggest just using risers or something like that if you have stable sturdy ones don't use the plastic junky ones that are in the back of the gym or in the group x room do not use those okay if you have legit risers in the gym use those or if you don't honestly put some plates on the floor something like that you could if you got good plates you know maybe some big bumpers something like that that's going to be good some people like to stand between the benches that gets a little bit you know less safe and i don't like that instability on the bench but whatever you can do basically to create a deficit you want to be able to stand on something where you have two of them and you're going to allow your dumbbell to be able to go down and between these two things all right so basically what you're going to do is stand up on the element that you are using to rise yourself from the ground. You're going to hold the dumbbell in a low position with your arms fully extended, basically like it's hanging down below you. And then all you do is go from there, keep your chest up, squat down and get as deep as you can uh, with good form and come back up. Now this fires the glutes a lot and it lets that weight drop lower than you would normally be able to go. And it's going to be really, really beneficial for getting a lot of glute development. That's got to be one of the top exercise for glutes if you're trying to get a ham tie-in okay next one i like a lot for a lot of competitors and remember i'm giving the exercise for both categories so bikini and wellness depending on your sets your reps and stuff like that it's all going to be different depending on your physique your goal which division you're doing obviously uh, as a general sense i'll say that you know you should be doing minimum three sets of these exercises uh, for wellness athletes could be more it's going to depend and remember i'm not saying just do these three exercises you need to be doing this with the rest of a training routine uh, the sets and reps are going to vary depending on what stage you're in what your goal is but these are definitely going to be good exercises regardless so bulgarian split squat another one that everybody loves to hate but it really does do the job um, and again a lot of people can mistake this as a quad exercise and keep in mind your lower body when we're training lower body it's going to work no matter what we're getting all kinds of muscles to fire up but if our focus is on the glutes our focus is on whatever muscle we're putting intention into then we can shift that kind of benefit in the training to actually focus that area more right especially since we did the warm-ups and we did the activation drills right and we did the rolling right so that's all beneficial the split squat uh you know just dumbbells is good you can do barbell you can do it in a smith machine you can do it without one whatever uh but basically you want to kick your foot up on a bench you want to make sure you have the right position and i really think it's more beneficial a lot of people try to stay super upright with this when you do that you're putting more on the quad and it's not really as beneficial i think it's better if you actually lean forward a little bit more in this exercise and when you drop down kind of sink into that knee bring that knee down towards the floor if you almost shift your weight backwards what's going to happen is you're firing up the glute you're also getting a ton of hamstring on that front leg okay so basically you want to shift the load to the posterior chain the glutes and the hamstrings instead of actually just putting it all into the front leg so doing this exercise killer it's going to really hit it and you're getting a benefit of you know the whole hamstring and glute together primarily glute but also a stretch benefit from that hamstring really prepping it to go to work on some later exercise so really good exercise number three barbell hip thrust i threw this in here again uh we talked about i mean basically you're never going to have a glute workout that's going to be beneficial that does not contain the hip thrust in some form or fashion so i'm putting it in here again like i did in video uh one where we're talking about upper glute if you missed that go check that out but basically here you want to make sure you're doing this this is one of the best exercises you can do it from a deficit even something like that where you put your feet up a little higher drop in more do it with a band at the knees just make sure you're doing it don't be skipping that hip thrust and make sure you're actually training this right like i see a lot of people doing one of two things totally crazy uh, i see a lot of people doing way too light a lot of a lot of women not lifting heavy enough there you know doing very high reps with like 50 pounds or something like that that's not going to benefit you you're never going to put that mass on you might feel like you're getting a good pump out of it but really that's all you're getting out of it and then i see the opposite where people are doing like one to three reps or something 390 pounds or something and like yeah that's awesome totally badass but it's not really the best way for you to build muscle so what you want to do is find the zone where it challenges you you're getting good reps you're getting good quality range you're getting all these things to fire with you 
but you're not doing too little and you're not doing too much. Hip thrust, you know, it could be its own video at some point because it's so important to set that up. And again, I can't go forever. I don't even know how many minutes I've been doing this. If you're not bored of me yet, you <laughs> drop me a comment. Let me know you want more of these. Let me know uh, what you want me to talk about. I appreciate it so much. Thanks for watching. Hamstrings, and then we're gonna talk real quick after that about conditioning, I swear we're done. Uh, hamstring, exercise I like. Reverse hack squat. This one, a lot of people are, uh, are not doing, okay? I've been doing this stuff with competitors, bikini and wellness, forever. A lot of people are afraid to do this. Uh, they don't wanna set it up or they think it's kind of weird because they're using a machine that's a little bit different. The reverse hack squat is a golden exercise for doing this. You're getting you know, full flexion of the hip, full extension of the hip. We are firing those hamstrings on a different way and the stretch benefit is just insane. You're gonna get length out of it. You're gonna get a lot, a lot of tension on it and you're gonna really start developing the hamstrings to show that beautiful tie in on the stage okay so definitely not want to skip out definitely not want to say you know what it's just too weird i don't like it I, I think it won't work in my gym if it won't work in your gym get yourself a new gym all right you should be doing these reverse hacks uh glute ham race okay number two glute ham race so you might hear this as ghd glute ham developer this is that machine that you know a lot of gyms have but some don't i'll tell you a sub for it if you don't have one but again if you don't have them get yourself a new gym all right glute ham race uh, really good exercise. You start in that kind of upright position. It's almost like the Nordic curl that we talked about for the warm up. But here we're actually going to do reps. So you're going to drop down. You're going to come back up. You're going to drop down. You're going to come back up. And it is a super good exercise for really bringing that separation from glute to hams. So definitely don't be skipping out on this if you don't have that machine, which I know some places don't. You don't really want to tell your gym manager they suck and go to a different gym. Um, you can do like a rounded back uh, hyper extension with a plate on a hyper extension machine and that will work. You gotta have that rounded back though and locked in and tight because really what that'll do is put the weight into the glutes and it's still not gonna be as good. So get yourself a new gym if you don't have one. Suspended hamstring curl is number three here. All right, and this one you probably didn't expect to hear. A lot of people are like, what the hell? I don't even use those things. Isn't that just what the old people in the gym do or whatever, right? No, suspended hamstring curl is a killer, is golden for really creating this zone. It's almost a bridge in itself where we're doing the curl. So this you wanna do with uh, the suspension straps, TRX straps, if they still even make those, whatever. There's all kinds of different versions. Basically what you do is you lay down, put your feet in the straps, and you're gonna extend your body fully out your shoulders are the only thing making contact with the floor at that point and you're coating the legs in and you go back out this is killer okay we're not doing it like an isolation like we did with the warm-up we're actually doing it for reps now and that is deadly if you don't have those uh straps in the gym you can do this like i said with sliders where you slide on the floor some gyms have those uh, if they don't, you could get your own, you know, it's just furniture sliders work great. Or you can also use a Swiss ball, um, stability ball, something like that, that will roll. Remember that hamstring curl is killer. It's, it's absolutely insane for what you'll do. So again, that's three, um, exercise of each video is going real long. Uh, there's about a million that I could give you and I'll do more of these videos by the way. But if you really want to know, the course is going to be the key. So put your damn email on that list so I can tell you about it later. The last thing though, okay, here's what kind of ties the whole hamstring tie in together, ties the tie in together is the conditioning. Okay, so what does the conditioning mean? I've said it throughout this video. It means how lean you are. You have to make sure you have the right level of conditioning. You can do everything I said in this video, and if you don't have that level of conditioning, you will never show a tie-in. If you look back at the competitor shots we looked at, you know, these are competitors that are competing on stage, which means they are at peak level of conditioning and muscularity. Like, it's, it's peak day. It is the day. It is game day for those competitors, all right? Like, if you're in the off-season improvement season, and you're training hard trying to build your glutes and your hamstring and you're going at it going at it going at it going at it doing all the rolling doing all the activations doing everything i said getting your calories up uh and you have more body fat you're not going to show your tie-in okay it just won't happen you're not really ever going to show that tie-in unless you have the right level of conditioning but also you can't just chase conditioning and expect to get the tie-in because if you just chase conditioning all you end up doing is getting leaner but you're burning muscle and you will never show the tie-in anyway you'll just look like a string bean, right? That's that's also not ideal. So realistically, the perfect combination of a glute ham tying goes like this. Glute development that is at the correct level. Hamstring development at the correct level. Conditioning at the correct level. And that conditioning is really, really 
damn close to stage conditioning. Like competitors may show tie-ins a week two before show, pretty good, whatever. Uh, but really, right on, you know, comp day should be the day they're at their peak. And they're not going to hold these through the seasons. They're not going to do all that. You're not going to have it all year round. It just won't happen unless you are okay with not making progress. Because basically, like I said, if you want to keep developing, you want to keep building, you're going to have to build, which means putting more body fat on, which means it won't show the tie-in and so on and so forth. So remember that. That's important to note. Uh, you got to train all this time and you got to do these things and then bring the right conditioning. And that's how you get it. If you're not getting it, it's probably from one of those things I mentioned uh, in this video about exercise selection not doing the world it's not doing this the last thing i will say is it just takes time ladies and gentlemen uh anybody out there trying to get a tie-in it takes time you're not going to get there overnight um you have to be well trained athlete you have to have built a lot of muscle and you have to be very patient with the process uh for new competitors it may be multiple seasons multiple years of training before you really show glue tie-ins. Keep in mind, the athletes we're looking at in this video are at the Olympia, at the top of the whole entire organization, the top of the world of wellness, top of the world of bikini. They've been training a very long time to get where they're at. It's not gonna happen to you in season one, unless you've already been training with weights for a very large portion of your life or something, you already have that development. Very rarely is that gonna happen. You probably just need to compete longer, keep doing the things I mentioned longer, and be patient, okay? That's the point of bodybuilding. The constant and forever improvement that you want to make and you continue to make and you do your best and you go to stage and then you go back to the drawing board and try to beat it this is a sport that always grows and will forever so just keep that in mind you know the tie-ins and all that you want them you should get them you're gonna get them if you do the things i talked about in this video but enjoy the process while you do because you you get to enjoy those things you know as you go through it as you develop as you build and grow and that's what this sport's all about, all right? So I'm ranting now. I've been talking too long. I know I had probably too much caffeine today, whatever. But I appreciate you watching. Thanks for sticking around. If you made it this far, uh, subscribe. Drop me a comment. Let me know, do you want me to do more of these? And remember, I'll say it one last time. <laughs> I'm really excited about these courses I'm making. It's going to be for coaches, and there's going to be one for competitors. So if you're either one of those and you want to learn more stuff than I gave you here in this video, hit that link and go ahead and put your email in. And we're going to update you as I develop this stuff, all right? So thanks. Thanks for watching. Coach Rye is out.